All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board meeting for Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome again. Um, Laura, if you would please roll call. Mueller? Severson? Here. Larkin? Here. Lewis? Here. Samurai? Here. Uh, Palmer? Here. And Superintendent Kathy Kelly it will, is not here this evening. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Thanks. Okay, our mission statement, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner. All belong, all succeed. Our core values are community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Next up would be the approval of our agenda. If I could get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Natty? Second. Second by Molly. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Announcements. October 15th at 5.30, there'll be a school board work session here in the community room. October 17th and 18th, there'll be no school. October 22nd at 7 p.m. there will be a regular school board meeting here in the community room. November 4th, Monday, there's no school. It's a grading day. November 5th, Tuesday, there's no school. It's a district in service. November 12th at 5 p.m. there will be a school board subcommittee on policy meeting. And then November 12th at 7 p.m. there will be a regular school board meeting. Um, next up is correspondence. Uh, Don, is there any correspondence? No correspondence. Thank you. Next up would be communication to the board. Citizen employee representatives. At this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to the brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that administration follow up. The board will not take action at this meeting on requests presented at this time. I do have one card here. Uh, move forward here. Next up would be the consent agenda, which includes the personnel report, minutes of the September 10th and 24th school board meetings and the September 17th school board work session. So if I get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Second. Paula. Paula and Laura, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Next up would be uh, discussion reports, information items, reports from members of the board. Board members will report on activities since the last regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Laura, please. Oh, I, I would have to start first here. Um, <laughs> well, well I, I attended uh, the 916 board meeting um, last week. Um, probably in the interest of, of time, I think I'll, I'll kind of defer my report until the, the next board meeting. Um, there's some stuff that I think maybe I'd like to <coughs> explain a little bit more fully. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. So. Thank you. Paula? Um, since the last meeting, I've had numerous communications with parents and uh, Superintendent Kelly, and I attended the communication audit focus group and the tenure teacher reception. Congratulations. Thank you. Molly? Yeah, I attended the um, some Columbia Academy volleyball games, some varsity and JV football, also some strikers adapted soccer games. There's a few games left and it is really a great experience. If anyone wants to watch a fun sport, they play over at the Highlander Center. Um, I also attended the communi communications audit and the academic lettering award ceremony. That was wonderful to see so many of our students recognized for a GPA of 3.67 or higher. We had many students there. And I also had lots of conversations <coughs> with parents. Thank you. Yeah, I have able, been able to attend a couple football games. I got to go to Coronation on Monday morning. It was fun to see the kids out in the stands, finding creative ways to pack them together uh, under the construction is kind of comical. 8.30 Coronation, why not? 8.30 a.m. Coronation, why not? Perfect time for a tuxedo. Um, <laughs> I was able to meet a few of the tenure teachers at the tenure teacher celebration. John and I had a chair meeting right before this. I uh, went to the communication audit focus group and have had lots of conversations with community members. 
Oh, I skipped it. Academic lettering ceremony. I was also there. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, I also attended the academic lettering awards. That was a. It was really fun to see the gymnasium full of kids um, at that level. Um, attended the policy meeting prior to our chair meeting, and then the tenure celebration just before this. Uh, there will be no superintendent's report tonight, which you've all been waiting for. Uh, um, our tenure teacher recognition. Chair Larkin, members of the board, super, no, superintendent Kelly. Um, tonight, Columbia Heights Public Schools is recognizing 15 teachers for achieving tenure with the district as of July 1st. It's always a big celebration and there's a lot involved in um, achieving tenure. Before we call each one up to receive their certificate, Executive Director Stenvik's gonna say a few words about the honor of tenure. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the board. Uh, this evening, we are really pleased to recognize this outstanding group of teachers that are reaching tenure. Among this group are people truly dedicated to education um, from our youngest scholars up through high school and even a parent educator. Uh, this cohort in, of teachers in particular stands out in multiple ways. They're equity-minded, they deliver excellent instruction to their students, and they have demonstrated excellence in each of their own ways. For example, I've seen them developing lessons that engage students through their artistic interests, uh, getting students up and moving around the classroom, honoring students' home language and culture, analyzing growth data to provide that just right instruction, and promoting innovative school-wide literacy initiatives. They are all outstanding teachers, strong advocates for our children, and they exemplify Heights Pride. So we're excited to hear more about them from our, their principals. So I'll have each principal say a few words before we call them up. First. Thank you. Chair Larkin, members of the board, I'm very pleased to be able to uh, congratulate two teachers from Columbia Academy, uh, Tanya Heifert and Tina Schaefer. They are our literacy coaches. Uh, they both were tenured in other districts before they came to us. Uh, we feel very fortunate to have them on our staff. They are, as Director Stenbeck said, they are equity-minded. Uh, they help our teachers to provide excellent instruction to our students. Uh, they have made us a better school. And I'm hoping that they can be with us for many years to come. Uh, they, unfortunately, they couldn't. They both had family obligations tonight, so neither one of them is here. But again, congratulations to Tina and Tanya. Yes, and I'm sorry, I thought that maybe Mr. Um, uh, I'm, I've got one more that I'm sorry, I, I'm going to. I'll do that too. So we also have uh, with us Elma Clark, who is with us full time this year. She has been between two buildings for a long time. So Elma Clark is one of our special ed teachers. Uh, she works with some of our uh, our kids that have uh, part of their time in classrooms, and then they will spend t part of their time with her. And as a result, they come through the day in flying colors. And I think without having Ms. Clark there, that could be a very different story. So Ms. Clark is our, uh, our comforter. She's our calmer. She's our teacher that uh, provides that extra loving support that makes, uh, makes it work for a lot of kids. So a uh, big congratulations to Elma as well. And then finally, sorry, I uh, also have one more, Sarah Clayton. <laughs> Sarah Clayton, who is our science teacher extraordinaire, uh, who has been with us uh, uh, and also at Valley View, so has taught at two different buildings also. Uh, she is a sixth grade science teacher. She is a hands-on, uh, do the experiments, get them up and moving, uh, provides amazing uh, classroom experience for our kids. So. Uh, very proud to have her on what is a very strong science team at Columbia Academy, and she is an integral part of that. So congratulations to Ms. Clayton, Ms. Clark, Ms. Heifert, and Ms. Schaefer at Columbia Academy.
And I'm happy to be here this evening celebrating our early childhood family education team, our two teachers with our ECFE program. Abby Sunquist is our parent educator, and she works with parents, the first and most important teachers to our youngest scholars. And she works with parents who, um, from prenatally all the way through age five, and also parents that are uh, learning English. And she, along with Lorian Stewart, um, our ECFE uh, early childhood teacher, they together uh, offer our classes not only here in the Family Center, but out in the community. And I really appreciate Lorian's uh, care for the youngest scholars in our district from birth through five years of age. And congratulations to our ECFE team. And at North Park, we're equally fortunate. Uh, we have two teachers who received tenure this year. Um, first is Colleen Graff. Uh, Colleen is our, BA, our, our reading interventionist. Um, and Colleen works uh, with our uh, most struggling, struggling readers in kindergarten, first, and second grades. Um, but, she, but she has so many value adds. Um, Colleen is incredibly flexible. And she just fills gaps all over the building all day long, whether it's uh, doing busing in the mornings or, or honestly policing the hallways while she's teaching in them. Um, and and just picking up slack everywhere. She's someone who, if she wasn't there, it, we would really know it. Um, so we're incredibly fortunate. And she also has a wonderful sense of humor and, and keeps us all not taking ourselves so seriously, which, which is pretty important. <laughs> and, and secondly, we have uh, Allison Berkus. Um, and Allison, I'll tell you, they, uh, they, 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 there aren't a whole lot of teachers like Allison. Um, she, is, uh, she started out in fourth grade. Um, and then some principal moved her to second grade, and then another principal, the same principal, moved her to third grade. Uh, and, and it's simply because she can do it as well or better than just about anyone, regardless of the grade level. Um, she has an incredible equity mind, um, and uh, no surprise, uh, she has an incredible leadership ability. Um, and uh, she's one of those teachers that in her first year, um, it was she seemed like a veteran. And I know when uh, Mr. Meyer came aboard as a dean of students two years ago and learned that she was only in her second year of teaching, he couldn't believe it. Um, so she's someone who feels like she's, she's been at North Park for a very long time, and, and I hope that she continues to be at North Park for a very, very long time. I have the honor of um, congratulating two of our Valley View teachers. Uh, Karen Kramer, our pre-K teacher, uh, who is in attendance tonight, um, is an amazing lady. Not only does she educate some of our youngest uh, uh, learners, but some of our older learners at Metro State. Um, she has taken on the role of a mentor to one of her, her previous colleagues, who is now a teacher at Valley View, and is a wealth of information. Um, funny story is, uh, Karen and I were talking about tonight, and her mom um, said, Karen, why are you getting tenure? You've been teaching forever. She goes, Mom, I've been a coordinator forever. Now I'm back into the classroom as a teacher. So we couldn't be any luckier than to have Karen supporting us with our learners today. Um, our second person is Ryan Severson, uh, or Simonson. Um, he is our heritage in, uh, Spanish teacher who is amazingly adaptive. Um, he is working not only with our EL students, um, but our classroom teachers to enhance the learning all the way around. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight because he's uh, with his own children. Um, so I congratulated him on that, but we miss him dearly here. Amazing man. Chair Larkin, members of the board. Uh, this evening, Principal Robleski is out, so I get the, uh, have the honor to brag about some awesome high school staff that uh, we're keeping in the family, as the superintendent would say. So um, I have a script here. I'm going to go off script a little bit. Um, but as I'm going through uh, the five teachers here behind me at the high school, I know each one of them could teach in any high school in the state. So we asked, what, why Columbia Heights? Why Columbia Heights? So Caitlin Storm, she's our fearless leader in the, uh, with her band. Um, and Caitlin's <laughs> why is um, Heights is the district, or as a district, works hard to provide equity and a great education for all students. I've taught in a few other districts, and it's not like that everywhere. 
Michael Prowitz, leader in our social studies department. Why Columbia Heights, Michael? I love Columbia Heights. Uh, that Columbia Heights is committed to equity and closing the achievement gap. There are so many opportunities to roll up your sleeves and get involved. And the family at atmosphere of our schools make me feel valued and welcome. Kristen Cine Cariello, Social Studies. Why Columbia Heights, Kristen? I love working at the high school because of the diversity. Our school is, a, is like a micro, microism sorry, of the world, and each day I see kids building connections and friends that will make our world better, that will make our world a better place. Anna Stark, she leads our art department. Why Columbia Heights, Hannah? I enjoy working in Columbia Heights for two reasons, the community and professional opportunity. The community is diverse, vibrant, and committed. I love running into students at Ollie, which is down the road. I love getting to know uh, entire families from various walks of life. And for professionally uh, opportunity, talk about empowerment. Here in Heights, I have been empowered to pursue innovative arts teaching. Columbia Heights offers some of the most expansive and cutting edge art education in the state. It has been an honor to be a part of this. And then last but not least is Jen Ansel. She's out sick. She has walking pneumonia today. Thank you and great job staff. I just wanted to read the certificate once. The name will be different each time, obviously, <laughs> but um, this is to recognize and signify that Sarah Clayton has achieved the status of tenure with Columbia Heights Public Schools July 1st, 2019. So, same thing, everybody else names. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Elma Clark, special ed teacher at Columbia Academy. <laughs> Next we have Lorian Stewart, ECFE teacher. Next up is Abigail Sunquist, parent educator. You can bring him with. <laughs> Michael Prelowitz, social studies teacher at the high school. And we have Kristen Cine Cariello, social studies teacher at the high school. <laughs> now we have Hannah Stark, art teacher at the high school.
Next up is Caitlin Storm, band teacher at the high school. Now I move on to North Park, Allison Burkus, third grade teacher. Colleen Graff, Intervention Specialist at North Park. <laughs> and the last one here tonight to celebrate is Karen Peterson Kramer, Pre-K-4 Teacher at Valley View. We can just give them all one more round of applause. I'm sure you guys all have like assignments to be grading and stuff tonight, so you are <laughs> excused from the rest of the meeting. Just to do that, right? No. Okay, we're going to go ahead and keep moving here. Next up is the, uh, the board will be provided with information regarding Summer Academy. How you doing? Chair Larkin, members of the board, um, this evening we are here to present information on Summer Academy 2019. So with me to present is Disa Fabek, our Research and Assessment Coordinator for the District, and also Michael, Schr Michael Schrader, the Executive Director for Summer Academy. I think I'm just going to give you the drive. Okay. Of course, our mission is to provide worlds of opportunity to each and every learner. All belong. All succeed. And Summer Academy really encompasses um, our core values of community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Uh, this evening, we have an informational update for you, so not, no governance will come back. So with that, Executive Director Schrader. Thank you. First off, I would like to say thank you um, for hosting us here at, at Columbia Heights. Um, you provide excellent facilities and, and truly outstanding leaders and I feel like we are really blessed to, to be able to collaborate with you uh, year in and year out. So a big thank you to uh, the Columbia Heights School District. Summer Academy is a two and a half week summer uh, educational experience for high potential students um, that inspires challenges and develops uh, children both academically and socially. Uh, this year we ran um, at, from June 11th to 27th, uh, from eight to, eight to noon. We had two extended days uh, that go till 2.30, uh, we, and we held an open house here from 6 to 8 on June 26th. We had 69 courses running from grades 1 through 11. Uh, our tuition was, uh, remained the same for a second year row at $430, and our enrollment uh, was up from 13.85 to 14.04. Um, we had uh, teaching assistants in 7th through 12th grade, 60 uh, students, and those are essentially volunteers, as well as 25 program assistants who serve as employee, uh, employees and help out in various ways. Um, new courses, we had three sections open of exploring habitats through STEAM, um, and that is, our, that is our first one, two um, class that we've had at Summer Academy. Uh, we also added a second section of Tech Ninja, um, a play that we, we brought back years ago. We had a play at Summer Academy, so we brought one back, Great Americans of the 20th Century. We added two new um, To Be an Artist courses. 
um, as well as a second section of Mythbusters, and um, we added four new teachers uh, to our first grade project. As a general overview, um, each year you, know, you walk away from Summer Academy, it goes so quick in a 13-day period. Um, and this year, what, what I know that I'll take away from, from Summer Academy is, is us as a community and, and that feeling. Well, we had staff members experience uh, some traumatic events this year in their personal lives, and it was amazing to see their Summer Academy uh, community rally around them. And, and you get that sense that we're not just here for 13 days as individuals, but that is truly a, a family environment, um, each, each one looking to help uh, one another. And I think that carries over with our students, and it provides it that warm, um, engaging, uh, you know, caring learning environment that we want our, our, all of our students to have day in and day out. So it's something that I, I was, I felt fortunate to see and I see when, when I go into the classrooms. And so that's something that I know um, I'll take away and I know that um, I think our students feel it too because they continue to come back. Our, our program's based on these students wanting to come back and continue and you see them come back as volunteers and you see them come back as program assistants and, um, and even as wanting to be, to be teachers here at Summer Academy. So um, I, I'm very proud of the community that's been built at, at Summer Academy. Um, some, some things that we saw this year um, that you know, we really feel like it is a family-based program and, and we have to listen to our families. So some of the things that we did this year, um, we added transportation signs to Highland to make it easier on our new families to know where their students' classes are. That way our, our first and second graders are confused and the families aren't confused when they're coming from 12 districts to know where their little ones are at. Um, we added breakfast at both sites um, to make it easier um, for our kids not to be transferring from Highland to the high school. Um, we had a direct communication uh, year round to both myself and to our administrative assistant to, to answer questions as they come up uh, throughout the school year. And, and as well as registration, um, we continue to revamp and we're looking to now actually be in the process of uh, building our own registration site um, to meet all the needs of our families and to make sure that we are not trying to fit our system into somebody else's, but we are actually trying to build our own system to provide the best experience uh, for our, our students and for our families. Um, as far as our being financially healthy, um, I'm very proud to say that you know when I first came on, we were um, we weren't in our, our best financial state, and we've come from in the past two years from a a organization that had a $10,000 fund balance to an organization who is now has a $150,000 fund balance and is very has a really financial stability um, that as long as we keep on these these steps will be a, a sound program for for many years. Um, for our joint powers agreement. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that. Uh, so every three years, the school boards that, are, that participate in Summer Academy renew the joint powers agreement. Um, last June, I came to the board to present information and provide an update on where the joint powers agreement was at. Um, the program has really grown in terms of attendance and participation, and as Director Schrader mentioned, um, financially and fiscally healthy. Um, and so there's been talk among the districts um, over on the eastern side of the metro about adding a second location. Um, so the recommendation was to, uh, as you can imagine, that entails a lot of planning and preparation and um, agreements and whatnot. Um, so in order to, in, in, instead of opting to renew the three-year joint powers agreement. The idea was to renew it or extend a joint powers agreement for one year um, so that this during this year, the Summer Academy um, participating districts, um, board members, superintendents, um, and whatnot could hammer out all of those details. Um, Ideally, in August, we would have brought that one-year extension joint powers agreement to you. Um, the attorneys are, are, you know, have drafted a, a draft. The superintendents and different administrators are needing to review it, and it will be coming to board. So I think we're pretty close. Yeah, the, revi the revisions are in the hands of the lawyer. Um, they're the, the simple revisions to be made, and then they will be. We'll move it back to. Um, our districts uh, to the superintendents for review. So we'll be back um, when that's ready to, to share that information with you. But that's where we're at. I, I wanted to provide an update in terms of the joint powers agreement for you. Oh, sorry, I'm driving. 
Thank you, Chair Larkin, members of the board. I'm gonna speak briefly about our Columbia Heights students attending Summer Academy this year. So the tuition did increase um, two years ago, but maintained last year at 4.30. Our students, um, because we're the host site, have tuition at $330, but we're excited that all scholarship requests that were asked of were able to be fulfilled. So all students who requested were given scholarship in various funds, and we gave out over you know $4,500, which is wonderful. We want our students to come. Uh, early registration, um, we spoke a little bit about this already, but this is something that we're really excited about. It's having a set amount of spots available for families that may need support and registration for various reasons. So we tried this two years ago and found a lot of success, and so we continued it last year. And really, thank you, Zena. Uh, it's about you know v various times uh, that we're offering this. We're having different language supports, internet supports, depending on what the need was. We did invite all families who were invited to Summer Academy. It was open to anybody to attend, and we had eight families come and uh, 10 students enroll early. <coughs> so representation this year, we did have 29 students attend. More wanted to attend, um, but for last minute reasons, which we'll get into, a uh, few weren't able to, but 63% of the invited students did attend. So that is a good start. We're excited to push that a little bit more this year. And then a graph of over time, so you can see we're increasing our enrollment overall and hoping to keep that a steady increase. So reaching out to families about what were some of the barriers, because 100% enrollment would be great of our invited students. Uh, it is a half day program, and so ending at noon can be a challenge for some families. Transportation, uh, the scheduling component, sometimes it's right when vacations are or other uh, family events are. Some of the supports we have available, of course, our scholarships are available, making sure that we have all languages um, that are needing support provided, early registration, and then our teachers have been incredible at communicating uh, information early and often. So if there are any questions, one thing I'll just add is, um, the purpose for the support for early registration and, and allowed, allowing 20 slots for our district to early register in the um, DSOFABIC has set up um, th you know, in this room, these supportive environments with laptops and interpreters available is to increase diversity and access for, for students to Summer Academy. Um, that's something that's talked about quite a bit at the Summer Academy board level. Um, and so um, instead of talking about it, there were some actionable items taken and um, Director Schrader um, presented that information to the Summer Academy board that we are indeed increasing our mm -hmm. in diversity and it continues to um, be something that they're striving forward. Questions? So you'll be bringing us something back for, we're basically extending it for another year then? Yes. Okay. That's the idea. All right, mm -hmm. we'll look for that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks for so much. Thank you. Thank you. Stop summer programming update. I just left. I think Nathan just snuck out. Oh, there he is, just in time. <coughs> We needed to have musical chairs again, right? That'd be awesome. You missed that it. Was, we had to. <laughs> that was great. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the board. We're here tonight as a team to share about our summer programming from this past um, summer, 2019. I'm here with Zena Stenvik, Director Zena Stenvik, with Director Stunkel, Kristen Stunkel, with Assistant Principal Nathan Meyer, and Director Dr. Fry. Our mission in Columbia Heights is creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner. All belong, all succeed. And our core values that we're focusing in tonight are on excellence, collaboration, and innovation. So the importance of summer programming. There's a lot of research, very strong research behind it, and the importance of having summer programs for students and activities. Um, not just summer school, we're gonna talk about all the different summer program opportunities. And really, that students who don't have that opportunity fall one month behind where they left off in the spring. And to even push it even further, students who have that opportunity, that growth that they have and that opportunity they have lasts for two years. We see that effect <coughs> in research for two years. 
So it is really important for us to continue to grow our programs and reach out, as they explained before, for Summer Academy, really finding ways to connect with our families. And I feel like this summer we had a lot more new opportunities that we're excited to share with you. Director Stunkel. So along with the variety of programs are a variety of goals that we have for our summer programs, certainly to provide reading and math interventions, also opportunities to earn high school credit, so, uh, helping our students who are developing their English language skills, opportunities for fitness, including aquatics through our um, uh, Encore Aquatics lessons, Services required by the IEPs through our special education department. Opportunities for enrichment, high quality child care with our mini adventures and, and adventure club program. And then also opportunities to learn athletic skills and to participate in summer sports. So with our 21st Century Grant, uh, that programming which we call Encore, which we have after school and, and in some of our schools before school, during the school year, we also have a robust Encore program during the summer. With our elementary Encore program, 313 students were served. With our secondary, that was uh, 196 students. With our Encore Aquatics, 44 students. We had Encore Strength and Conditioning, and that was two different sessions, 99 students total. We partner with our 21st Century Grant with the Rec Department and with the Library. The Rec Department served 173 students and the Library 151 with the Encore programming. Community Education also offered this year for the first time ECFE classes during the summer. We had 219 participants. Those were drop-in classes, so there might be some duplication of numbers, but we had, uh, we've never done this before. And the families were so excited. The, the classes um, were, well, we, we need to offer twice as many next year because there were just so many parents interested. Also, we do early childhood screening. We increased the number of screening sessions, 129 screenings done. Our mini adventures program served 49 students. Adventure Club, 82. With Blooming Heights School Garden, we had 950 students visit. Uh, there again, some duplication might have happened. Driver's education, keeping um, our all of us safe on the road. Um, 27 <laughs> students going through the driver's education program. Adult enrichment classes, there also we incre increased that programming along with some trips, 68 uh, adult learners. And then our adult basic ed program had 379 students for 17,083 total number of hours of contact hours during the summer time. You'll remember that we really decided to work, or not decided, but we've expanded our partnership with the rec department, with our activities and athletics department, and with community ed. And you'll see that more sports classes than we've ever offered before. 28 in a swim and dive camp, six in the girls basketball, 17 for the middle school football, 34 for the high school football, 37 in girls volleyball, nine in gymnastics, seven in dance, and six in lacrosse. So a lot of students learning uh, sports skills that will help them as they move through middle school and high school sports. Chair Larkin, members of the board, uh, thank you for letting me talk about extended school year this uh, year, or for this summer. Uh, this summer we provide, again, uh, programming from birth to 21, and it's based on students' IEP, IEPs and whether they are um, regressing whether they have unique needs or whether they need some self-sufficiency. So there, from our birth to two classes, we served 12 students in their homes and with parents. And our three to five, we served 14 students, um, both here at the Family Center as well as in their home at Head Start and in local um, nurseries, so to speak, um, our childcare settings around Columbia Heights and Fridley. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then at, uh, at uh, Valley View, we uh, had ESY where we had two classrooms with three teachers and we served 19 students. And then at um, Columbia Academy, we had two teachers with educational supports as well. We served eight students there, ensuring that students are making progress on their IEP goals, that they're not regressing, and that they maintain the skills that they learned through the summer or through the school year into the summer. And hopefully, so then those skills will continue to grow um, here in the fall.
This year we were able to continue our programming through Encore. So what we had in the past was summer school. We were able to offer it to everybody since we're offering it as Encore. So in the past we really focused in on those below grade level. And this year, like last year, we were able to offer the opportunity to all. And we were excited about that. We did look at data to ensure that we're reaching out to the students who need it. So we looked at their reading and math data. Um, we checked in on it at the beginning as well as the end, as well as surveys that we used to ensure that we're making an impact with the programming that we have. This summer, summer school ran similar to summer academy dates um, from um, June 11th to the 28th. And we had approximately 306 students. And it was at Valley View, which was nice because the middle school was next door at Columbia Academy. And we really allowed the teachers to work to together to collaborate on a theme. And you'll hear in a minute from Assistant Principal Nathan Meyer about the impact that had on the teachers as well. But I even heard teachers at the end of the summer going, I love this. It's so inspiring. I'm ready to go teach again. So it's exciting to hear what they've done from that. And before we get into the student survey results, our principal this school year for summer, for summer Encore was Nathan Meyer. And he did the Summer Encore for middle and elementary, so both ages. And we were fortunate to have three principal interns. Um, they were staff members in Columbia Heights working on their hours for their principal's license. So we had Tiffany Grams Farkas from Early Childhood. We had Tara Lawrence from Columbia Academy and Emily Gartner, who's up in teaching and learning, all three working on their hours. So Nathan had a team. <laughs> he was going. So he's going to share about the results as well as the impact of that. But we really thank them for giving their summer and their time to support our students. Uh, and I will say, if you see any of those staff members around, the interns, you should, they did an amazing job. And we should be proud that we're raising leaders like that in Columbia Heights. Um, so uh, our students uh, reported overall really, really liking Summer Encore. 83% um, said that they loved it. 97% of students reported practicing math and reading every day, which is awesome because we kind of tricked them into it most days. Uh, <laughs> and 97% of kids reported making a new friend at Summer Encore. And what I think is really cool about that is um, uh, you know a lot of our students sometimes go between elementary schools. Um, the families move in the community um, or for different reasons and they reconnect with kids who they haven't seen in a while too. So that's a pretty cool, a cool thing to see. Um, and then when we asked the kids what the best part of Summer Encore was, some of them, some of the answers were friends I made, going to the gym and riding bikes, math time, um, that kid was not paid, Chromebooks and <laughs> meeting new people. Um, so, and you just, like the kids, it's amazing, right? They end school on a Thursday, we have grading day on a Friday, summer school has staff on a Monday, and the kids come back on a Tuesday, and they are there with smiles on their faces, and they're just ready to go. So it's really, really fun to, to just keep it going. <clears throat> and then the staff, um, I think one of the things about Summer Encore is that we can be a little bit more relaxed. Um, we focus a lot on math and reading, but teachers get to do it um, based around a theme that they choose. So it's normally something that they're passionate about, which really inspires the teachers and the students. Um, and then we also have the great opportunities, which makes teachers love it, like to go to Blooming Heights. I think every class went to Blooming Heights at some point um, during the summer, which was really neat. So our staff said that they, a uh, great group of students and staff and administration, um, the flexibility of what we taught, um, it was fun to do a theme, uh, the three weeks seems to be uh, a good amount of time. Um, and this year we returned to having a specialist block. So last year we, they got prep time at, at the end, before at the beginning or end of their contract day. Um, and this year we had specialists. And I think teachers really liked that. And the specialists, they, they went to a special for a whole week. So they did art, science, or PE for a week. Um, and it was fun. And I love, I mean, I got to go, I played some fun games in PE with them too, which was, which was neat. And then um, that it was well organized and everyone was supportive of each other. And again, being split between two buildings, um, I know we've had principals do it here for a whole year, but I could not have done it without the, our summer school interns. They were really, really awesome and they stepped up to the plate and um, just good things coming down the pipeline in Heights. Mm -hmm. And the survey results did include middle and elementary, so they were both levels, but a little about our middle school summer encore. Um, once again, we were able to do the same as the elementary, focusing in on 
looking at the data and ensuring we're gathering our students to come that really need it, but opening it up to everybody. And it was the same date as Nathan was there across the parking lot going back and forth. It was fortunate that it was just a parking lot that can go back and forth. So the uh, middle school Encore also had the opportunity to have specialists. So students had PE, they had the different opportunities to have um, music or art or those pieces in there as well. So we were excited about that, that they had specialist time and were able to collaborate with each other. And we had feedback from the middle school teachers that it was enjoyable to work together to come up with themes mm -hmm. and to really encourage the students. And the students were really excited to come for that. Another opportunity we had for middle school Encore was we connected with the two literacy coaches that Dwayne had talked about. And they came in the summer and had a little contest or um, program for the kids to try to read six books in the summer. So every middle school student who left summer school left with a backpack that said Columbia Academy with six books that they chose, new books to continue reading. So it was great that they had that piece to continue the learning throughout. They were high interest books. They were good titles that they chose. Nathan was excited. I he was excited, yeah. <laughs> Another program uh, that returned was Summer Seminar. So again, this was for incoming ninth graders. And this is a collaboration and a co-taught class with St. Anthony. Um, so we have Columbia Heights and St. Anthony students and teachers working together, both for a writing seminar and then a coding or math seminar. Um, again, we had robust attendance and participation. The teachers um, collaborated to um, take advantage of the fact that it was the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11. Um, and so both classes did work around um, themes of Apollo 11. Um, this person in the photo that you see is the president of a local rocketry group. Uh, and uh, we reached out to him just to get some advice. And he came out. And the students incorporated math and measurement and predictions and physics. Um, with their and had to build the rockets, um, so that was part of it, and uh, um, that was a pretty new and exciting addition. Um, this again, really robust participation. Students coming at this age level, not because they have to, but because they they choose to um, to um, design video games and write amazing pieces. And at, of course, we have a culminating. Um, presentation at the end where there's a video game release and essay um, reading. Um, new for summer seminar was we decided to bring back some of our summer seminar students from the past and launch into a connection that we have with the Junior Achievement Building. Of course, one of our previous alumni of distinction, Jim Hemack, um, uh, worked to um, help restore and build this new um, building, Junior Achievement Building in St. Paul. So. Uh, the students held class in St. Paul, the high school students, and they took a course called Entrepreneurial Mindsets. And one of the Columbia Heights teachers, who is an entrepreneur herself, uh, taught the course and using the curriculum through the Junior Achievement Program. Um, lots of opportunities. Every week, a, a business person came in to give advice to the students and talk with them. They got to go out to local businesses and hear from the owners and just what it takes. Um, and so we visited a couple times and got to hear from the students. Uh, really impressive, and we're looking forward to continuing and expanding that opportunity for next year. And we also continued our high school programming around students needing credits. So working with 916 once again for credit completion. And this program is run and managed all by District 916. And so it is here in Columbia Heights. Um, but they do all the pieces with the curriculum and all of that with the students. And there were 103 students this year who attended, and they earned a total of 57.8 credits. And on the right side, you can see 2018 and 2017. So pretty similar numbers from 2018, but still that jump in the number of credits from 2017. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to see that and a few more students getting the opportunity to gather those credits that they need for graduation. And then some amazing pictures of some of the programming that happened this summer. Mm -hmm. Shows us the beautiful days that we had and the fun opportunities. And any questions for us? Do you have any questions? Can I just make a comment? I thank you all and to all the teachers and staff that are supporting you during the summer. I think it's critical that we offer opportunities for our students 
Um, and there are a lot of options um, for just really anything that these kids want to do. Um, I know my own kids had trouble deciding um, what they wanted to do. And it was great for them to have so many options that they couldn't decide which program they wanted to participate in. And my own kids were busy all summer long. So um, an amazing experience from, from me as a parent, but providing these to our students. Um, thank you for your passion and for what you do for them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, next up, the strategic direction is B. <coughs> Chair Larkin, members of the board, uh, this evening, uh, Dr. John Fryer, our Director of Special Education, Brian Hennigans, our Director of technology security and buildings and grounds. Um, and I are here to present on the new strategic direction B. Um, of course, our mission is to create is creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner all belong all succeed. And this evening, we're really focusing, uh, again, encompassing all of our core values, um, but really focusing in on excellence and collaboration. Uh, this is an informational update. So there'll be no governance coming forward. So as you know, recently the Columbia Heights Public Schools strategic roadmap was updated along with mission, core values, vision, and the strategic directions. So um, we now have four strategic directions. As you can see in this evening, we'll be presenting on um, improving each student's academic achievement and career and college readiness. So this was quite a process to put together the new updated strategic direction um, over a year of input from the community, staff, students, and parents. Um, from that information, the team, a larger team, uh, determined the areas of focus for continuous improvement. And when putting together the strategic directions, the metrics for the directions, um, the team had to ask our ourselves, we had to ask ourselves, do we want to continue to post the areas that we're constantly succeeding at? Or should we really hone in on areas that we really need to improve in and look at continuous improvement and growth? So we are going to continue to celebrate the positive areas, but really report out to you each year on the strategic directions for this three-year period of areas we're going to have a laser-sharp focus on um, to grow. Um, so this will be our baseline year, um, which means that um, because the metrics have changed and, and the, exactly what we're measuring has changed, some of, some of the data, we're, most of the data will have, you know, MCA data, achievement growth and whatnot. But there are a few different tweaks that we're starting to collect this year. So I think you'll see three areas um, where we're, that's a baseline for this year that we're going to start to collect. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, first area, B1, <clears throat> um, personalized learning. So B11, teachers engage in professional development and impact technology integration strategies and various models of blended learning, prioritizing intentional use of technology. Um, you can see that we're at, at less than 50% of our teachers at intervention. Um, I, I wanna make a note here that um, the, you know, these are very specific things. We have a group, we have a couple groups now this next year. Um, we have two pioneer groups, but they're, they're, it's work that teachers are doing you know, beyond um, some of, I would say some people say traditional technology use, which is just intervention programs um, that we're doing online versus um, in the past we did, you know, paper and pencil or extra workbook stuff. Um, the, this is going well beyond that. So kind of the true conversation of what we've been trying to talk about with our personalized learning initiative. And so this is data, this is data that we have, um, we've been working on and, and I know we'll continue to see that grow. Um, I was just working with Director of Teaching and Learning um, on that uh, today on you know, what, are, what are our plans for next year and how we're gonna fund it. So, um, <laughs> funding. Uh, but uh, so I definitely see growth there uh, in our near future. Um, the other two are, um, I'll just read them quickly, teachers' use of data with students to provide feedback and guide students in understanding an individual process, and then teachers establish norms for digital learning spaces that unify instructional practices. These are new measures, um, and uh, we will um, be putting those in place this year, so we'll have data for next year. 
as part of a survey. Yep, and they're, both of them are part of surveys, separate surveys. So one of them is teacher-driven, um, classroom to classroom. The other one is, is uh, so the teachers are driving that um, data. And then the other one we're, we're gathering through a, a tool that we've used for many years. We're just adding questions to it for Bright Bites survey, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, B21, grade level and department PLC rubric artifacts and evidence of implementation. Last year we began recommitting to PLCs. Many, many teams of teachers across the district implemented PLCs. This year we're going to continue to, or we're going to begin collecting um, on a regular basis, turning in those artifacts and evidence based on a rubric. Um, and we're starting that um, this month. So that will be a collection period going forward for you. Um, the recently at a work session, the board was presented with academic achievement data and academic growth data. So you were able to see that in certain grade levels and pockets, um, we're seeing some increases in growth in reading. Um, we're, you know, have more concerns in math in those different areas. Um, but overall, as a district, you can see um, growth in reading uh, on the MCA. Um, not enough growth in math, and in terms of academic achievement, um, not, you know, that is an area that we're addressing and, and working towards through our PLCs and through our professional development and all of the opportunities. So again, a, an area for growth. Um, the top one there, B2.5, is science MCA as well for achievement. And then moving from the ACT to SAT, again, um, this is, these are all of the areas that we're focusing in on as a district, as a team, um, that we need to get better at, and we're committed to doing that. Right, and that commitment, if you look at B27, the two bottom ones there is looking at the reading and math scores for our special ed students. Again, our metric talks about 45%. That is about the state average. For reading, it's 45%. For math, it's 42%. So our goal, our goal at the intervention is to get to the state average and then looking at high concern and baseline and what have you is to, to go past that. And uh, right now we're plateauing at reading for the last two years, right around 30 to 31 percent of students making growth are maintaining where they're at for reading. And then for math, this is kind of exciting, we went from 19 percent to 26 percent in math. So yes, while we're still under the state average, the growth is happening in math, at least for special ed students, and I would submit to you that the Dreambox, the Spring Math, the Khan Academy, that all contributes to the success of our student, or special ed students. Regarding reading, we're implementing um, and piloting some new curriculum uh, based on Orton Gillingham and looking at decoding and phonemic awareness, which I will submit to you will show this growth um, of our students. And so I would, I look forward to coming back next fall and, um, you know, talking about our students' greatness in reading and math for special ed. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, last but not least, uh, um, you know, we've kind of seen the marks as we've gone through this, so it's no surprise that we're at intervention level. Um, and uh, we have a lot of work to do in this area. Um, so if you have any questions for us. Oh, I just have a comment. I'm glad since we're starting out with the new strategic, uh, strategic plan that we're actually focusing on something that we're really struggling at. So um, seeing, I, I guess, as our, our starting platform is being high concern, I think that's a great place to start. And I'd like to see that needle start moving up really quickly. I know you're dedicated. And, Thank you for really focusing on where we really need to be. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Couple of action items, uh, enrollment, ceiling, yeah. Chair Larkin, members of the board. <coughs> um, this, uh, you were given information on enrollment at North Park Elementary. Um, we continue to monitor our enrollment numbers daily and weekly um, through reporting and, com and comparisons and whatnot. Um, and we've had an influx over the last couple of weeks in North Park in kindergarten in first grade. So on the one hand, that's really exciting that we have three full uh, kindergarten classes at North Park. Um, on the other hand, you know, they are out of room and they're kindergartners, and we need to keep that at a... Um, for our guidelines, you know, follow our guidelines for, for enrollment. So 
Um, this evening, due to student enrollment beyond capacity at a school grade level or program, so in this case, grade, grades K and one um, at North Park Elementary, um, I'm seeking approval to be to close those two grade levels to open enrollment for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year. There was a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just to remind everyone, we go through this every time we've had to do this. Um, any student that is still um, residing in North Park's boundaries is still able to enroll their child there. That's this correct. is just encouraged open enrollment. Yes. Encouraged, encouraged. Yes. to enroll their child yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Any of this uh, result of the construction that's going on? And have spaces availability changed? Currently, the kindergarten and first grade spaces are not affected by the construction. Um, uh, they, it's more fourth and fifth grade that have had to move into different spaces, um, but kindergarten and first grade um, currently are not affected in terms of space. Next year, they will have large, brand new, beautiful spaces for pre-K four, two sections over there, and <laughs> uh, three new classrooms for kindergarten. Mm -hmm. okay. Truly a growth yeah, okay. yeah uh, based on the the regular classroom numbers okay Thank they're you. filling up Anybody else? okay motion on table is to approve uh, closing school and grade levels <coughs> kindergarten first grade at North Park mm -hmm. all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain motion carries thanks Anna. thanks uh, board topics anybody have any for board topics Captain Obvious, but it's homecoming on Friday. Okay. So I know there's a lot of homecoming festivities happening. I think there's a Strikers game tomorrow afternoon. Is that what they announced to the students? Is that, Molly, do you happen to know? Or I believe it's away, though. Oh, it's away. They were encouraging the kids to go, so maybe it's close. I don't know. I think I know. <laughs> I don't know. Not yet. I'll know tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, and then we will, again, tailgate in the student parking lot at 5 o'clock. The whole community is welcome to join. Just bring something to eat and hang out before the game. And th we're doing fireworks after the game uh, okay. once again. So neighborhood beware. And, and is it after touchdowns, too, after scoring? Are we doing fireworks? No fireworks after touchdowns. Oh, no fireworks after touchdowns? No fireworks. Okay. Only at the end. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does this get up, Brian, to actual our meeting? I'm sure it's like wow. eight, eight o'clock. Really? That was okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it, but um, I know that at the high school, part of the homecoming celebration is they're actually having a barbecue mm -hmm. um, in the the square over there. Um, for parents, they're inviting parents. Six o'clock for the parents. Is that the Wednesday night or Thursday? Night? That's Wednesday. I got it at Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And they're doing that. Yeah. Six o'clock in the courtyard. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. Okay. Yeah, in the courtyard. Yep. Okay. Um, I believe Highland has their conferences tomorrow night because uh, school board members will be doing a listening session there. I know I'll be there. Who else is? I'm with you. Okay. You'll Molly and I sign. will be at Columbia Academy on Thursday night. You're bringing the sign? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we need to hand that off. Yep. Uh, high school has conferences, 415 on Thursday, starting there, and then uh, um, I know they'll be recognized in the Hall of Fame, um, uh, the football game on Friday as well. So lots of stuff going on, like you said. So. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. And no further board topics. We'll adjourn the meeting at 820.